you are already on the path of awakening. It's time to transition from a life of struggle to a life of play. It's time to discover your autonomy, agency, sovereignty, and potency. Welcome to Reveal the Game of Life. Welcome back to Reveal the Game of Life, the show where we take highfalutin, esoteric concepts about consciousness, and then we distill them down into plain English, things that we can understand and use and apply, (laughs) hopefully, (laughs) in our everyday life. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Chris Tommaso, and I'm here with our other host. Molly Mandelberg. That was a highfalutin flute. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> highfalutin horn. Today we're talking about claiming your seat at the table. And this is kind of a metaphor that we've been talking about for if you've ever felt like you wanted to be in the room with the movers and shakers of your reality, perhaps the people that feel kind of far beyond you or people that were with you and then moved beyond you and you want to go be with them. I'm reminded of the, the song in the play Hamilton, I want to be in the room where it happened. There's this, this desire to want to do that. But in that desire is its opposite, which is you're not there. And that there's something you have to do to get there. There's something that you have to beg, borrow, steal your way in. And I know for me in the past, I've always had this feeling when I've been around really conscious, visionary type people that I kind of like crashed (laughs) their party. Like I I snuck in through the back door and that I didn't belong there. And I had to convince people like, oh no, I'm going to get found out or I can't, I can't do that. I don't have a seat, right? I can just hover over them while they're having the conversation. That's not so much the case anymore after doing a lot of the identity work that we talked about with the quantum self, the stuff we talk about in our Reveal the Game of Life live experience. Those things help me feel a sense of, no, I belong here. I am, this is, I'm just as worthy of being at this table as anybody else. There's no such thing as worth or not. And I think we're going to probably break this metaphor before this episode is over about the seat at the table. But just to say that, you have a seat and no one can take that away from you. And it has your name on it. And it is your, we'll call it divine birthright to do the things that only you can do. But it's easy to get kind of tripped up about how to do that. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. Molly, what's uh, been your experience with claiming your seat? Yeah. I mean, I love this concept so far. This feels really good. And I love that Hamilton reference. And now it's stuck in my head. (laughs) I mean, there's a lot of songs in Hamilton that are really about this. Like who's going to write your story. I, I end up sobbing by the end of Hamilton. Like I have to write my story. I'm writing my story. (laughs) I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. Yeah. There's a lot in there that's very of this energy for sure. But yeah, I mean, I was having the experience. I play with amazing coaches and holistic practitioners. I get to talk to leaders all the time who honor and respect what I do and ask for my support to help them do what they do. There's many ways in which I'm at my seat at that table. And there's been times where I'll be honest, Chris has told me about the movers and shakers he's meeting with and like the things he's creating. And I'm like, damn. I haven't even been asking to sit at that table. Like, where am I not even claiming or aware of the seat at the table that I want to be at and that the level of creation I want to participate in and the people who are already playing at that level and what would it take for me to start stepping into that or at least start asking for that? Um, So I'm grateful to you, Chris, for sort of in some ways showing me something I wasn't even looking at yet that I do desire more of. And so I've started asking that question, where's my seat at the table? And we've talked about this on the doppelganger episode, but when somebody shows up and they're doing something you want to be doing, but they're doing it really well. And you think, oh shoot, they took my spot. That's the place in the world that I wanted to be standing. And that that's actually an absolute fallacy. Like we talked about it in the doppelganger episode. You can go back and listen to it if you haven't listened to it, but that that person is showing up is evidence that you're actually moving towards that thing you desire, not that that spot has been taken. And not only 
is there no way for someone to take your spot at the table? There's definitely a spot that's yours. <laughs> right. Like it's there for you. And so it's a matter of like claiming it and stepping into it and figuring out where in the world you need to be or who you need to be talking to or what energy it's ready to be embodied to really claim that throne and sit in that seat and be yeah. a part of the conversations in this world that you want to be a part of. Yeah. And it happens as if by magic, I'll say. Yeah. It doesn't happen the way you think it's going to happen. It doesn't show up because you planned it to. It, be, it I think, is a product as if everything <laughs> is a product of the energy that you choose to carry and that you step into and allow to be your new normal that then those opportunities come at you and arise and you get invited to something that has someone there that you needed to meet for that next thing to happen. And it's this series of events that seem coincidental, accidental, like synchronistic, magical, and impossible to have planned that way. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. So it's like, you step into that energy, you start calling it in, you start asking for it, you start wondering what that's going to look like. And then opportunities arise, stuff shows up, people come in and say, hey, come over here. Or like, we need to talk to you. And that happened to me this past weekend, because I started asking that question a few weeks ago or months ago of like, wh where, where is that table that I want to be sitting at? And how do I be a part of this conversation of consciousness in a way bigger way? And two people came into my life in this past week that were like, oh, these are some people I want to be sitting at that table with. And look, they're looking at me like, yo, sit down in that seat at this table already. Like we need right. to talk to you. Um, right. And that's really a really fun experience to watch manifest or actualize in front of your face. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wanted to say like for someone who's thinking like, well, but I don't know where my seat even is or you know, like how, how is, how will I know there's going to be a spot for me? The thing is, is you can't know by observing your reality because your reality is just simply a projection of what you have chosen in the past. So if you, if you don't see it yet, it's because you haven't chosen to see it. You have to choose first and then the, the space opens for you. It was always there, but you just were unable to see it. So that's the first step is you have to choose and you have to choose before you have data to support that it's possible. This is the, this is the leap of faith, right? But this is also, we're talking about, this is not necessarily your purpose, but this is like, this is the thing that makes you uniquely you, the thing you have both to experience in your life and contribute to the greater world. And so, of course, it's going to require a bit of a leap of faith because it's not obvious where it is. And because it's uniquely yours, it's not necessarily going to look like anyone else's seat. And so you can't say, well, that seat exists, so maybe mine exists. That's not how you locate it. You just choose. You choose to go. There's, if you're like me, you probably got something that's been with you since childhood, maybe. That's like, I'm supposed to do this. I don't know what this is, but I'm supposed to do something like this. And that's an element of how you locate it is like, if you separate the conditions of your life, the things that have happened to you, the things that you've learned about how reality quote works, what was there before that? What was there that was like, yeah, I'm supposed to do this. It was like an intuitive knowing that you may have had when you were a child. That's one way to locate it. It's not the only way, but one way to not locate it is to try to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> is to like, and especially to reverse engineer someone else's. So we talk about that, like building your seat at the table. This is not about that. This is not like, oh, I like that person's seat. So I'm going to reverse engineer what their seat looks like and then build it myself. That's like trying to make someone else's seat mm -hmm. and then occupy it, which will, <laughs> which won't work. Right. Or and it won't it, be and as it, fulfilling and fun as finding your actual seat. Right. And people won't be, they won't have that thing. Like you said, Molly, where they're, where they're like, sit down in your seat already <laughs> and talk to us, Yeah, like claim it, you know? So yeah. that, so I say that's number one is to choose it. And then, and then claiming is a process in itself, which is really 
you know, integrating with the quantum self is, is who is the person who's already sitting in the seat? What does it feel like to be in the seat already? Now, the cool thing is, is that the seat is natural because it's your natural state of being. It's not like this unknown, like, oh, like this doesn't feel right. When you sit in it, you're like, oh yeah, this is me. This is like activated, evolved me. This is all of me. It's a lot like dousing too. If you know what dousing is, is this silly old practice of looking for water in the ground. You hold a stick. When you walk across the ground, the stick bobs down where there's water under it. It's like a magnetic field kind of situation. Super Mm -hmm. woo woo. It does work though. I will say my grandmother doused for the well on their property in Northern California. No way, really? That's where they dug the well and that's where the water was and it worked. Wow. Pretty cool. Um, But dousing in your life is like you ask a question, where's my seat at the table? And you start walking through your life like a tuning fork, like a dousing rod, seeing what matches the energy of that vibration. It's like, okay, I'm walking down the street and I get this just energy like pulse from this coffee shop, walk into that coffee shop. It may just be a cup of coffee, but it may be something that either changes your state of being to that when you walk out, you're in a better, you're in a closer to that home frequency vibe, or it could be right. you bump into someone in that coffee shop that changes the trajectory of your life forever. So right. it's, you never know how it's going to unfold or progress. But when you start asking that question of where is my seat at that table, or what does my throne look like, or who am I that occupies such a seat of whatever this is, oh, yeah, this yeah. metaphor is going to go. What is it um, like to occupy such a seat? Yeah. Yeah. But then you start feeling, and I don't even mean feeling, sensing, perceiving, becoming aware of things that show up in your life that match it, that feel like an energetic resonance to that question, to that feeling, to that seat. And there's no way to really tell you how to do that except to remind you to be aware in moments where a choice comes up or a uh, interaction arises or someone sh- like is standing in front of you and you're like, I have to fucking talk to this person or an investment opportunity comes up and you're like, does this match the energy of what I've been asking for? Yes, it does. Okay. I'm moving in this direction, being willing to tap into your awareness, to ask yourself questions, to like, look at that thing that you're asking for, that thing that you want to choose or create or step into, and then look around your life and see what's matching that. What can I give my attention or focus to? What can I work on? What can I create? What can I be right now that more closely matches the vibration of that? And it creates magic. I really like using the term of who is the version of me that does this. Mm -hmm. And the reason why there's a distinction there, because Who is the person that does this? Because you might think, well, I need to be a different person in order to do this. But if it's a version of you, it's already in you. It just requires focus on that part of you. So that's one thing. I also think that the table that we're talking about, you might think, oh, I find my seat at the table and then I'm done. Or it's it's a fixed location. It's a quantum table. Right. And so and if it's all of you, then it's going to be all of the unique experiences you've had in your life coming together in beautiful synchronicity. So it's not just going to be one thing, one job, one place of being. Not necessarily. If you're if you're like me, then it's like many things all coming together at the same time. I could not have predicted that gamification would now be like a pillar of technological development and spiritual spiritualism in the way that we talk about it is going mainstream and the the bridge between those two things is storytelling which it's is 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 on either side and i'm good at all of those things <laughs> and not just good at because it's not just about facility with like genius is partly what you're uniquely here to do it's just what you're what's always made sense to your brain It's what you've always been called to do, what brings you joy. It activates you on the mental, emotional, spiritual levels. I could not have foreseen that that was going to happen. And I could not have built a path to it if I tried. A lot of these things are being revealed right now, right? Like they're, 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 I'm choosing to embody the self and more opportunities are showing up. The chair is revealing itself. I can't find it until I choose it. Because the thing is, is we're sovereign beings and that cuts both ways. 
you're sovereign, so you get to choose your reality, but you're sovereign, so you have to choose your reality, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't choose, if you're waiting around for someone to tell you, even us, to tell you what to do, then you're going to be waiting forever. Not maybe forever, but you're going to be waiting for a long time. I also want to <laughs> just like caveat because there's probably people listening that are like, yo, that big of a table sounds kind of sketch. I don't want to do it. Or right. like, I don't have aspirations that sound like I'm going to be at a table with movers and shakers. Like, no, that's a lot. I don't want it. For some reason, a friend of mine from Burning Man, one of my campmates, her playa name is Uba, which is U-B-A. And I was like, what does Uba mean? And it stands for undercover badass. And then I started mm -hmm. like, after I realized what that meant, I spent, you know, years knowing this person like, oh, yeah. She's not real flashy about it. She doesn't need to show it off, but like she's got her shit handled. She's got the bases covered. She knows what she's doing. And I hadn't noticed that in her before. I reckon I, I was told what her name actually stands for. Um, and that it can look like that. Your seat at the table can be this undercover, covert, mm -hmm. you handling some serious magic and like making shit happen. And it doesn't have to be flashy. It doesn't have to be fame and glory if you want it have that seat at the table but it can be it's really about claiming you and yeah. and being willing to take up the space that you were put on this earth to take up in right. the most optimal and fully expressed way that you can right. and nobody else has to know about it but you will and there's right. a different state of being that comes along with claiming that Right. Yeah. I think, you know, we like the table metaphor because I think both of us have this ambition to be part of that kind of community conversation, et cetera. But your throne is yours and it exists wherever is like the perfect place for you. It doesn't have to be at a table. I will say that if you're the kind of person that wants to be a mover and shaker, you're probably inevitably going to encounter other movers and shakers because also the more power you gain in this way, the more you get connected to the collective evolution and you start to connect with what other people are doing just naturally, not like you have to do it. Because I've seen people say like, well, what if I don't want to freaking serve a community? What if I just want to like, what if I just want to be the awesome version of me? Can't I just do that? And it's like, yes. And by being the awesome version of you, you will naturally impact others. Like it will and just, it will just happen. draw others like that to you. Right. Exactly. So it's going to happen. You don't necessarily need to focus on the community aspect if that's not the thing that's lighting you up. Yeah. For me, I, I had that for a long time. I was like, I just want to be awesome. I don't really care about other people. <laughs> <laughs> but as I, because that was like, there was a lot of unpacking there to do because as I unpacked it more, and we talked about this in our service versus servitude episode, you go from this like, I'm lit up. I'm in overflow. I want to share. And I love seeing how it impacts other people. So that was my journey. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, yours. I just see that that's generally speaking what's happening. The people in my life that I see who are continually evolving, they're impacting more and more people. And so they're in more and more community and more collective. And they're keyed into collective vision because when I get in conversations with people, um, who are like, would be at this table. We're like, we're doing the same thing. We're just doing it in different ways. Like we're, humanity's waking up and we're, you know, attempting to remake the world in the way that we want to do to have the most fun, play the most, that's the most equitable for the most people. All of that, that spreads the message of sovereignty. Everyone is doing that in some way. We're just all doing it in our unique ways because we get to, I mean, I'm picturing like the throne, the the oracle on the mountaintop throne. Not right. a whole lot. And people will come to you maybe, but you get to just hang out out there. Yeah. <laughs> picturing like the clearing in the woods throne. The, yeah. Like, the island in the ocean throne. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways it can look. And mm. I like that reflection too of like before you work claiming owning and acknowledging all of you yet you thought oh I'll just do this by myself 
I'll just be alone and do it. And it's like, okay, yeah, but now you've evolved and ascended to a place where it demands collaboration also. And, and I want that. And, and I love that. that. And what and what more can be created when it's a team, like the power of eight. Let Lynn McTaggart wrote a book about that. When more people are included in the intention, the intention is more powerful. Yeah. And I want to selfishly, I want to live in a world like that. I want to live in a world where I get to walk down the street and I know that everyone is taken care of if they want to be, whether or not they're taken care of by like a government or like some system or whether they're everyone's just self-actualized and sovereign and choosing their reality with total, you know, clarity. That's fine too. And if someone in that state is like, okay, I'm going to be homeless, then that's on me to be like, well, I accept that, right? Because I can't impinge on that person's sovereignty. That was actually a thing I had to work through, which is like, no, I want to live in a world that's like perfect and everybody's perfectly happy and this and that, right? And that's like the ego trip of, I have to create this world, not this world is being created and it's up to me to just find my place in it that I like the most. Where is my seat that I love the most? Yeah, and that is an invitation to see the world that you already live in as perfect too. Right, exactly. It, yeah. It's time, it's, there's no time, right? So we collapse that into this moment and that's what is already happening, which is a serious like mind fuck. Yeah, like <laughs> I guess the question to ask yourself is like, what is my soul calling me towards? I know for me, my soul has always been calling me towards really ambitious stuff. And this has been like, um, it's an unpacking with like the ego story about it. Like wanting to be rich and famous is a version of that. But how much of that is a, I'm trying to, to put this in human terms and how much of it is my soul being like, no, but you want to have the experience of that. You just don't know how yet. You just don't know exactly what the components of that are yet. So it might be riches and it might be fame, but it might also be something that's equally satisfying. Your mind just can't come up with it yet. And so what I would say is not, do you feel, I would ask people to check into their soul. Like what is your soul calling you towards? And it's, that's a process because sometimes your soul is calling to you and it's in a whisper. It's like barely heard. And you're just trying to like do stuff in your day. You're just trying to get through your day and get your stuff done. And I don't have time to follow my calling or, you know, what's whispering to me. But when you have a moment to check in with that, what are you being called towards? Good question. Yeah. 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 And again, you don't have to get clear. There doesn't have to be clarity. Could just be an energetic awareness that you get and you start dousing for that. Yeah. Like you said, like, do I like it in this coffee shop or do I like it outside the coffee shop? <laughs> yeah. Do I, is this coffee shop calling my name or not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you everybody out there for listening. If you dug this episode, share it with a friend, let us know. We're not sure yet when the next live experience will be happening, but if you go to revealthegameoflife.com and you click stay in the loop, you can be on our uh, favorite friend list and we'll let you know when the next live experience is uh, open for registrations. Um, mm -hmm. Take what works for you, leave the rest and can't wait to see what your magical, beautiful unicorn rainbow like warrior god and goddess throne might look like and what does that world look like with that many people claiming their thrones yeah like a a brilliant mix of just thrones of different shapes and sizes and people in their magical selves like doing amazing things i can't i can't wait for that yeah Love i'm it. not gonna wait i choose not to uh, here <laughs> now yeah okay yeah <laughs> awesome all right thanks everybody we'll see you next time